One of the biggest misconceptions that people have about Christians and about following the laws of Christ or the laws of God is that somehow Jesus have come to make it a lot easier on us to lighten the burden and he's made it to where we don't have to follow the law anymore and we can just do whatever we want and we can be under total lawlessness. All we have to do is say, I believe Jesus is my Lord and Savior and therefore we'll be saved. So what we're going to do is that we're going to take a look at Matthew 5. We're going to read some scripture from that. And we're going to see that Jesus actually make it easier for us. Or did he change nothing at all? Or did he in fact make it tougher for us? So let's get into it right now. All right. So the first scripture that we see is Matthew 5 and 21. And Jesus says, you have heard that it is said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So what Jesus is basically saying is that, you don't have to physically commit adultery to someone. Um, all you have to do is hate them, and you are you can now be condemned of murder, and that is an offense to where it's punishable by death. So, in that sense, Jesus did not make it easier for us to just be angry with people um, and just going about our business. Um, he he actually rose the bar and said, "You don't even have to go out and commit." A physical murder just by you being angry with someone condemns you under that law so let's go to the next one Jesus finishes he says so if you are altering your gift if you I'm sorry if you are offering your gift at the altar and there you remember that your brother has something against you leave your gift there before the altar and go first be reconciled to your brother then come and offer your gift Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going to court, lest your accuser, lest your accuser pin you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly, I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. So what does that tell you? Jesus is basically saying that if you are accused of a crime and back in those days, you kind of had to pay like a restitution fee and... You know, people always try to make it seem like that back in the Old Testament, you can just, you know, commit a crime and that's it. All you have to do is go and atone for your sin. And that's just, you know, you're just going about your business, but not in the not in the Old Testament. And clearly right now, what we're reading from Jesus is that he's saying that you will not uh, get out of prison unless you have paid all your restitution. And before you actually go to prison, you are supposed to make it right. With your accuser let's go to the next scripture jesus said you have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery but i say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart so basically we knew that back in the old testament anyone who was caught in adultery was to be put to death so what jesus is saying is that it's not the physical act that allows you to be condemned is actually thinking about that act which will actually condemn you or convict you of adultery and that is actually that is something that is punishable by death so just by having a thought of lusting after someone that automatically qualifies you to be put to death let's go to the next one matthew 5 and 29 if your right eye causes you to sin tear it out and throw it away for it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell let's read matthew 5 and 30 if your right hand causes you to sin cut it off and throw it away for it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell so again what jesus is talking about is if your eye literally causes you to sin um now he meant that metaphorically and literally that if your eye does causes you to sin then it's just better for you to just rip it out and if your hand causes you to sin, it's just better for you to just cut it off. So 
but that goes with any other thing. So therefore, you can't go into the presence of God and say, well, it was because of this or it was because of that. You know, my mother, you know, caused me to do this uh, or my father or my friends or, you know, I used to date this woman or I'm married to this woman and, you know, she likes doing certain things. And if I don't do it, then it makes her mad. So therefore, that's why I go along with it. So what Jesus was basically saying is that even if you are with something or with someone or indulging or engaging in something, even if it is something that is connected to your body that is causing you to sin, cut it off literally and get rid of it because you don't want your whole body to go to hell or you don't want to go to hell based on something that you are holding on to, even if it is your eye or your hand. So let's go down to the next verse, Matthew 5 and 31. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. So in this verse, Jesus is saying is that you don't have to go out and physically commit adultery with someone to be condemned of adultery. You know, again, what he's saying is that if you divorce your wife for any reason, and you know, we have a lot of that going on, especially in the church where people are just divorcing their wives and divorcing their husbands for, I mean, just silly stuff. You know, they're saying that, okay, well, you know, my wife, she doesn't know how to, you know, manage money greatly. And, you know, we've had to, you know, cut back on some things. We may have lost a house or a car or something like that. The woman may say, my husband, he works too much. He's always out. He's always late. I never spend any time with him. So therefore, I'm going to get a divorce. So what Jesus is saying is that if you divorce someone based on those grounds, besides sexual immorality, then you are committing adultery. And that puts you under the law of committing adultery, which was at the time in the Old Testament punishable by death. Let's go to the next one. Matthew 5 and 33. Again, you have heard it. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say simply be yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. So we see that people take oaths all the time, you know, especially people who are in sororities, especially things like, um, you know, Freemasonry, you know, you have to take an oath. And what Jesus is saying is that let what you have to say be an either yes or a no. Don't try to beat around the bush and say, well, I'm kind of saying yes, but I'm kind of saying no based on certain circumstances. And we see a lot of people do that today. Like, for instance, someone would ask you to do something. And I know sometimes I'm guilty of that, too, where someone will ask me to, you know, help them move, <laughs> you know, and I kind of don't like moving. I don't even like moving my own stuff. But you do have people who will say, hey, man, you know, can you help me move? And then I'll be like, well, let me see how things play out, uh, you know, this weekend or something. And I'll let you know if I'm available. And if I'm available, then, yeah. But if I'm not, then no. So what Jesus is saying is that don't do that. Say yes or no. Now, you know, if you're like me and you don't like moving, helping someone move, then just tell them, tell them flat out no. Um, if you know that in your heart or in your mind you're not going to do something, just tell someone no. Um, don't, don't even beat around the bush about it. So that is another commandment that Jesus is kind of challenging us to uphold the law or he's setting the bar and he's raising the bar for us to speak what we feel and to let our yes be yes and our no be no matthew 5 and 38 now this is the one that a lot of people like to quote um it says you have heard you have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth but i say to you do not resist the one who is evil but if anyone slaps you on the right cheek turn to him the other also and if anyone 
would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. That, is, that scripture just says <laughs> so much. And to be honest, this is what a lot of us as Christians, we struggle with. You know, we struggle with someone who is persecuting us and just being okay with it. You know, that goes against human nature, right? But Jesus has called us to renew our minds and our hearts. So the one where Jesus tells us to, you know, turn the other cheek, you know, that's one of the ones that's always challenging to us. Not saying that we can't do it, but Jesus is raising the bar once again. And he's saying that if someone is doing something evil to you, you know, you don't take vengeance out on someone else. You don't, you don't respond. Um, you know, someone slaps you, you turn, you know, give them the other side of your face so they can slap it again. And a lot of unbelievers, this is where they, this is scriptures like this. They don't understand. So they'll try to say that, well, that makes no sense. But if you understand it as a Christian, it is that humility, you know, that humbling of the spirit that we hear about where the only person that actually has control over where you go for an eternity is God. God is going to deal with that person for doing whatever they've done to you. So vengeance is the Lord's. It's not up to you to get vengeance on someone. Um, it's up to the Lord. But you are to stay the course and continue to be that light. So therefore, God gets the glory. So whenever someone slaps you on the cheek, you know, whether it's literally or metaphorically, you give them your other cheek. And that shows people that there's something wrong with this guy. You know, there's something wrong with this woman because I'm persecuting them. And human, and human nature says that we're supposed to go on a defense and we're supposed to put our guards up. And we're supposed to attack back and self-defend ourselves. But what God is saying is that, no, I'm, I'm going to be the one that's going to defend you. So that's another example of how Jesus is just taking the bar and just rolls it. Matthew 5 and 43. But you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So that you may be the sons of your father who is in heaven, for he makes his son rise on evil and on the good and sends the rain on the just and unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Therefore, you therefore must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And that's the end of Matthew 5. Um, you know, we didn't read, obviously we didn't read all 48 verses of, you know, Matthew chapter 5. But going back to this last scripture, Jesus is saying that what reward do you have if you're only dealing with certain people? If you only love certain people. The, the people that you are around, like what reward do you get out of that? You know, if you only love a select few people, but you hate the rest. What Jesus is challenging us to do as Christians is to not only love the people that surround us, but to love those who may hate us, who may persecute us, you know, people who may not like us even, you know, but continue to have love and compassion for these people. You know, if you see your enemy out there, let's say, you know, you're, you're out and, you know, or if you're at work, for example, you may see someone at work that you may not like, they may not like you. And let's just say that they're struggling with something, you know, and they clearly need help. You know, you as that Christian, you go and you help them out because that's how God gets his glory. With this video, you guys, I just wanted to kind of touch on a couple of quick um, just wanted to go over some quick verses because lately and all the time, I always hear from a lot of people who are unbelievers. They always say, well, you know, you know all you Christians got to do is just say, you know, I believe in Jesus. And, you know, when that's it, we don't, we, you don't have to follow the law. 
Um, you know, you guys should be following the Sabbath and Shabbat, but you guys don't do it because Jesus told you not to. And you think that you don't have to do anything. You can eat what you want, uh, wear what you want, be whoever you want to be, and you're still going to heaven. But as we just clearly read, just in Matthew 5, that Jesus rose the bar for his followers, that he took the law and he put it on another level. And it just goes to show you that the people who feel like that they need to follow, you know, the Sabbaths or they need to follow certain traditions or they need to, you know, only eat certain foods and abstain from other foods. These are people that's trying to take the easy way out. And quite frankly, these are the people who don't like Christianity because Christianity acts so much. It asks you to go beyond being human and to almost being godlike, you know, here on earth and to put away your natural desires of the flesh and actually start to have uh, a desire for God. And that's where a lot of people have a problem. So like I always tell people, there's only two religions in the world. There's only the religion of God and there's only the religion of man. Man's religion is always going to do something. It's, it's all about you doing something to better yourself and not really worrying about anyone else. You know, if you help someone else out and, you know, why you're trying to better yourself, then that's fine. But it's mostly about you. But God's religion is about putting others first and then putting yourself second. And as we just read in these scriptures, that is what it's all about. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and if you're a Christian, don't don't get discouraged when people try to make it seem like that. We're supposed to be soft and, you know, we're supposed to be, you know, cuddly and, you know, smiling and grinning from ear to ear all the time. Um, don't get discouraged by that. Jesus has called us to a higher standard, and that is what we are to focus on. We are to focus on having that heart for God and letting his glory shine through us. So, uh, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like what you've seen comment, rate, like, share, subscribe, and uh, as always, you guys have a blessed day.